Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So in part one of this series, we took a look at the Milwaukee CP 2.0 and 3.0 batteries, and we compared those to some RC lithium polymer cells. We got some pretty amazing results with nearly six hours of runtime from that 5200 milliamp hour battery. But that got me to thinking, is there an even better option out there? And sure enough, I think I found it. So let's check it out, let's get into it. All right, so in the previous video, this guy right here, the Z5200 milliamp hour battery, that was our reigning champion, okay? Um, we got somewhere between five and a half and six hours of runtime out of this particular battery. Um, what I did was I went back online and I took a look and I wanted to see what was the biggest 3S or three cell pouch under 11.1 .1 volts that these guys make, and this is it. <laughs> so this is actually a 9,000 milliamp hour 11 11.1 volt RC battery, all right? So let's go ahead and just pop this thing out of the box and I can show you guys what I'm talking about here. So the first thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna give you a little product manual. It's really important that you take the time to read this because this is gonna contain all of the safety precautions that you have to take when using a lithium polymer cell. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we take a look at that. Uh, you've got a quick product card here, just with the company's information on it. Um, and again, it gives you some safety information here as well. And it specifically says, hey, if the battery looks swollen, deformed, anything like that, make sure you take the proper precautions, dispose of it immediately, contact the company, okay? Uh, they give you a cool little decal here, so that's kind of nice. And then, on to the main event right here. All right, so there it is, guys. 9,000 milliamp hours, all right? So what I wanna do is I just wanna kinda give you guys a comparison between the 3.0 and the big boy here, all right? So if we take a look size-wise at these, we can definitely tell that there's a difference. This 9,000 milliamp hour, it is definitely a lot taller, probably by about inch and a half, almost two inches, once we take into account the wiring here, okay? Um, if we look at the overall width of these, mm, you know what, the 9,000 milliamp hour definitely wins out here. A little bit slimmer. Weight-wise, a mm, little tough to tell. So what I've done is I've got the scale here. So let's go ahead, fire up the scale. Hopefully this is gonna show up on camera for you guys, but let's see what we got here. The CP 3.0 clocks in at about 287 grams, okay? You really don't, weight-wise, you don't notice this in your jacket, but you definitely can feel it digging into the side there, okay? If we go back to last video, this guy right here, the 5200 milliamp hour battery, this guy is gonna clock in at a whopping 320-ish grams. But to give an apple to apple comparison here, this battery has the adapter on it already, so I'm also gonna include the adapter for this one as well to interface it with the jacket. That gets me to a whopping 334 grams, okay? Now, let's take a look at the big boy here. Now, what you're gonna notice is, in my previous video, the 5200 milliamp hour battery, this guy here uh, uses an XT60 connector. This one uses something called an EC5 connector. So, what I did was went online and I found an EC5 to XT60 adapter, okay? Now I can already hear the keyboards lighting off in the comments. Oh, you shouldn't be running all of these adapters and things like that. Something you gotta realize, for my particular application here, okay, um, I am running at about 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 amps at 11.1 .1 volts. I am basically trickle discharging these batteries. So after I've added on all of that bulky goodness here, all right, this is what I'm, this is what I'm left with. And this guy's gonna weigh in at 598 grams, all right? So yeah, you definitely got a little bit more size and a little bit more weight here. So again, comparing it to the 5.2 amp hour battery, you know, you guys can see this fella definitely is a little bit more chunky, okay? Um, but is that bulk, is that size gonna actually be worth it here, okay? Um, what I've done is I've compared the 3.0 to the 5200 milliamp hour to this monster 9000 milliamp hour battery. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna throw those results up on the screen here for you guys, all right? Um, so while this is getting going here, uh, my apologies, a little bit of a delay with the uh, CP 3.0 getting started because I'm playing around with a new camera here, but you can see that this one's gonna clock in right at that about two hour and 40 minute mark. 
Now, something to keep in mind too is when this thing kicks off, it's kicking off at um, 10.2 volts, okay? 3.4 volts per cell. That, that's where, how we're getting that 10.2 volts. Um, now, what you're, what you're gonna notice in the video is that I've actually added a little something to the test here. You're gonna see uh, this little tiny device that I've connected to that sense port on the battery, and that is a low voltage monitor, okay? The RC community was awesome with giving me feedback on how to do these tests and how to make things a little bit safer for everyone, so I added one of these in play here. So I've set all of these to run down at 10.2 volts. That's when the alarm's gonna sound here. So sure enough, I retested the 5200 milliamp hour battery right at about five hours and 30 minutes, that's when it lit off for me. Okay, that's when that, that's when that low voltage alarm kicked off. So at that point, I was down to 10.2 volts, okay? Um, again, you can set this a little higher, a little lower, but you wanna reference the documentation that comes with your battery uh, to make sure that you have it within a safe range, okay? I did the exact same test for the 9,000 milliamp hour battery, and again, I'll throw them up on the screen here. You guys are gonna see what's about to happen. This thing is a beast. So this thing went nine nine hours and nine minutes. Now, to be honest with you guys, I was actually a little bit disappointed. Doing some napkin math and looking at the discharge rates and where we were at, I was actually thinking that this big battery was gonna last somewhere around that 10 to 11 hour mark, which would be awesome. Think about it, if you're on a job site and you're working a 10 hour shift, you could have heat the entire time. That would be fantastic. Um, but something I had to keep in mind, when I was keeping an eye on the low voltage monitor, it monitors voltage of the individual cells, okay? So what was happening is we were clocking in at somewhere around, um, I had a couple cells that were at still at 3.6 volts, actually two cells were at 3.6, one dropped real quick down to 3.4, and that was right at around that eight hour and 50 minute mark. I started to see a pretty quick uh, drop off. Typically, based on my internet research and whatnot, that tells me that I might have a, a cell that's not quite up to snuff in this thing, and that could be a potential issue for me. We're gonna have to do a little bit more testing on them, but again, um, for the price that I paid for this battery, I really can't complain in terms of the, of the longevity that I got out of it. So, uh, in, terms of, in terms of feel, having these in the jacket, this little fella, you don't really even notice this thing is there, okay? It's fantastic. It slots right in that corner, very, very comfortable, okay? This one, you know it's there, okay? Uh, it's still relatively comfortable because with the way that it's shaped and how it sits in the jacket, even with like, uh, you know, all my adapters connected here uh, with the low voltage alarm in place, you know, it's still relatively comfortable because it's propped in that upright position right in the corner of my back. So if I do happen to lean back against something, it's not super uncomfortable, okay? Um, the big question is, would I recommend going out and getting one of these over one of these? And the answer is, it kind of depends. Uh, it's really gonna depend on your use case and your situation. Are you cool with getting a reliable five and a half hours safely out of this battery? Um, or do you need a little bit of additional runtime? All right. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is I'm probably gonna be sending this battery back because of that issue with that cell. Again, I'm gonna try to charge them up and discharge them a few more times just to see what happens. Um, but you know, uh, there is also an 8,000 milliamp hour option in this that's actually a hard case. And again, um, hats off to the RC forum and the RC community in general for pointing out a lot of these safety issues and concerns. As a matter of fact, if that's something that you would like to see, me talking a little bit more about the lithium polymer safety and adapting it for these types of applications, let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to put together a video that discusses that, all right? Um, so again, overall, I am super impressed with both of these batteries. This one, again, if it didn't have that issue with that one cell, I'd really think I've got a winner on my hands. But again, this 5200 milliamp hour, this little fella here still packs a wicked punch. So folks, if you found the video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell notification so that you know when a new video comes out. Helps my channel out big time, all right? Thank you so much, folks. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.